Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is the Bebop, Parrot's latest camera-toting drone, third in its generation, following up on the AR drone and AR drone 2.0, refreshed, upgraded, and carrying a fresh branding. Perhaps to signal it's ready for prime time maturity, perhaps it's because AR Drone was a dry and boring name that nobody liked. Either way, the Parrot Bebop is a quadcopter with a lot to cry about. It's surprisingly lightweight and unexpectedly robust. It's carrying a full suite of sophisticated sensors, including a 3-axis accelerometer, 3-axis gyroscope, 3-axis magnetometer, and an ultrasonic sensor to measure its height above the ground at up to 8 meters. Beyond that, it uses air pressure sensor to measure its height above the ground, and it has a special downwards facing vertical camera to help track its speed by looking at the motion of the ground passing beneath it. It is festooned with sensors. Oh, that's not all. I forgot one. It's got GPS as well to help keep it hovering in place without drifting in the wind and to let it return automatically to its takeoff position at the click of a button or after a couple of minutes if it happens to lose contact with the controller for whatever reason and to process all of the sensory data constantly pouring into it, it has a bespoke Parrot P7 dual-core CPU navigation computer and riding shotgun alongside that is a quad-core GPU, which is used for handling the very special party trick of the forward-facing camera, which we'll get to in a moment. And humming away under the hood on all that hardware is a Linux-based operating system, to which Parrot also offer up an open-source SDK, so the cleverest of hobbyists out there can muck about with it. And all of this cleverness boils down to two things. The Bebop is remarkably stable and a joy to pilot. The stability is fantastic, in a word. It's like somehow glued to the spot in midair. It's amazing. No amount of prodding or pushing or poking will phase it at all. It will drift around very slightly, as all drones do, but the remarkable array of sensors, the GPS lock and the processing power on board all work beautifully together to keep it amazingly stable and stuck just where you want it to be stuck. And while doing all of this, it's also sending back a live video feed from the main camera to your smartphone or tablet so you can see precisely what the camera is seeing. No guesswork on framing up the shots here. Now, that special party trick I mentioned that the quad-core GPU handles. Well, look at this footage from the onboard camera. Beautifully stable, remarkably so, in fact. And to push that home a little more visually, here is a side-by-side -side of the onboard camera compared to simultaneously recorded footage from a camera I attached directly to the Bebop's fuselage. Now, stabilized drone camera footage is hardly a new trick. Many, if not all, high-end camera-equipped drones will have a very sophisticated camera gimbal on board, physical motorized cradles that counter-move the whole camera to cancel out unwanted twisting and tilting of the drone. But the trick here is that there's no gimbal at all, no moving parts, no hinges, no wires, no extra battery power-sucking motors to control the gimbal. The camera is hard-mounted to the frame. No part of the camera, not the sensor, not the lens elements, ever move an inch. The stabilization is all digitally accomplished, cropping out a 1080p video frame from a much wider fisheye view from the 14 megapixel sensor. The processors constantly account for any and all incidental movements, delivering only an extremely level, stable, smooth video feed. It even corrects for much of the distortion inherent in ultra-wide angle lenses. But you can still move the camera view around manually if you like to as well, like you can do on a gimbal, instructing it to pan or tilt to your desired perspective. Although this movement is a bit on the robotic feeling side, so it's not advisable to do it mid-shot. Better to frame up and shoot. Though with extreme care and a bit of patience and lots of concentration, you can get good shots out of it while both tilting the camera and moving the drone around. But it's not easy. There is 8 gigabytes of storage space on board. Sadly, it is not user upgradable or extendable in any way, so you will have to be a little extra aware of memory management. But that 8 gigabytes is more than enough to store full recordings from several flights. A fresh battery will get you around about 8 minutes or so in the air, performing active maneuvers and recording a constant video feed while sending that video feed back to your screen. And that 8 or 9 minutes worth of recording will eat up somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.6 gigabytes of the 8 gigabyte total. And Parrot are even cool enough to supply you with three batteries right in the box of the Sky Controller Kit, or two batteries in the standard kit. Now, 
Sky Controller, what the hell is that? Well, you can buy the Parrot Bebop with or without this rather imposing and awkward looking controller. If you choose to go without, you can still have full function and full control using just the phone or tablet app, which is in fact the very same app used for the Parrot Rolling Spider Mini Drone toy that I reviewed a few weeks back. It's stable, feature rich, and offers a decent flight experience with three different modes of control, but... I highly recommend you choose the option that comes with the Sky Controller, a full-on control device that is in fact running its very own computer humming along on Android. It not only provides normal sticks, the tactility of which cannot be understated when it comes to the flight experience and level of control offered over the touchscreen experience, but the Sky Controller also has a big honkin' antenna array on the top there which boosts the control range from about the 20 or 30 meters or so you get from an average smartphone's Wi-Fi antenna right up to a range of about two kilometers. Say it with me, two kilometers. Uh, that's uh, 1.6 miles or something, I think, if you're still using the old measurements. Now, I've not been able to test that range in a city as dense as Sydney, where I live. It's very difficult indeed to find a space that large in which I can safely and legally fly the drone for up to two friggin' kilometers away. What I can tell you, though, is I never, not even for an instant, lost connection or complete control of the Bebop when using the Sky Controller under any conditions. My maximum distance was probably somewhere, and I'm estimating here, probably somewhere in the range of perhaps 300 meters line of sight, far enough away that I could bear see the small drone with my naked eye. The Sky Controller also offers up physical button controls for the camera, takeoff and landing, both automated and simple, the GPS return to home function, and adjusting the view of the camera with a little joystick on top, simple readouts for battery levels, both the controller and the drone's battery, and signal strength. The app works the same regardless of if you're flying with just a mobile device or if you're using the Sky Controller. And in fact, the Sky Controller has a special clamp to accommodate anything from your smartphone right up to full-size tablets. So it all becomes one cohesive control deck unit. You can use the app to adjust things like maximum vertical height, speed of rotation and tilt, which will affect maximum horizontal speed, and you can track all your flights, how often you crashed. It will even give you a complete GPS tracked map overlay of your flight path, which is really cool. You can set it to indoor or outdoor mode. If you're flying indoors, Parrot give you these set of uh, bumper hull thingies. Which I just have to say, if you watch a lot of other videos on the Parrot, a lot of other reviewers seem to have attached these things upside down for some stupid reason. I mean, they've got lettering on them, so you know they're upside down, and if you attach them upside down, the longer back pieces get in the way of the camera view, and I've seen a few reviewers complain about that. It's not Parrot's fault, it's your fault, you drongo. You've got them on upside down. <sighs> Just sorry, had to do that rant. I, I, I don't understand how these idiots put them on upside down for crying out loud. Stupid people. Stupid people. This is why you should watch my reviews. I'm smart. Smarter than those drongos anyway. Where was I? Ah, while flying, as I mentioned earlier, you get a live video feed. It is not full frame rate. It seems to average somewhere about 10 to 15 FPS. I'm guessing here, just estimating. But it is enough to get you a very good idea of how you're moving and more importantly, how your shot is framed up. Detail and clarity are adequate, but not brilliant. And it's obviously not the full 1080p. Smoothness is a bit of an issue sometimes. Every second or so, it'll drop a few frames. So while the Bebop can be piloted purely first-person view, and in fact, the Sky Controller will even accommodate first-person view goggles for an immersive flight experience, if that's something you're interested in, it's not something I'd recommend if you're flying past or through obstacles particularly. The slight chugginess, the very slight delay, combined with the slightly narrow field of view delivered when compared to the fisheye view most FPV pilots may be used to, don't make for an ideal FPV-only experience. But in any case, many places in the world are now laying down laws that require line-of-sight piloting anyway. So aside from that, the camera behavior in general is something I'd put about the same class as a GoPro 3 Silver Edition, just to give you sort of a frame of reference you're likely to be more familiar with. You do have the ability to manually adjust the basics like exposure compensation and color temperature and white balance, but in practice the default auto mode tends to do pretty well for itself. The auto white balance does tend to lean on the cooler side of things, which I don't love, as I usually like to shoot a little bit warmer, but it's hardly difficult to fix, either within the app's own compensation or in post-production. Exposure is usually well metered, but dynamic range is a bit more narrow than I'd have liked it to be. Under more challenging lighting, like Dawn for example, the extremes of bright and shadow tend to get a bit blown out and muddied up respectively. But under most normal lighting conditions, it deals with things pretty respectably 
sensibly. In stills mode, obviously you don't need the video stabilization tricks. You do still get the stabilized video delivered to your screen, but when you take a picture, the parrot actually delivers a full 14 megapixel still of the full fisheye view, which you'll be glad to hear can be saved either as a standard JPEG or as a RAW file. In this case, the common standard DNG file format. Easy to use, compatible with just about everything. Lovely. And you will want that raw file, by the way. It is a significant improvement over the fairly aggressive JPEG compression applied normally. Now, of all the careful design work and attention to detail that appears to have gone into making the Bebop such a sophisticated and very clever quadcopter and flying camera unit, there is one glaring design catastrophe. Well, it's not at all as dramatic as a catastrophe, but it does stick out like a hammered thumb. The battery change. You'd think, looking at the batteries themselves, that they would just snap into place. Indeed, they do just that in the charger. But on the drone, they're connected by a wire. A wire you have to pull out of the fuselage with a bit of looped string, and then awkwardly connect this short wire to the battery terminals, and then slide the battery into place, and then, sin of all sins, strap it down with a bit of Velcro. This is not an awkward user experience issue that should have ever made it out of the prototype stage for something like this. It stands out as a glaring white hot, if comparatively minor, annoyance. Not to be honest with you, it's more confusing than annoying, really. I mean, I can deal with the awkward battery change, but I just can't figure out how, or indeed who, at Parrot ever said, Yes, this is good enough for our highest end flagship consumer quadcopter. Send it out like that. That Parrot is a is a French company, hence my awful French accent. <laughs> Sorry, Frenchies. Another quirk of operation is the motor cutout. Now, if you knock into an obstacle, the drone will instantly kill power to the affected motor to limit potential damage to the props and whatever you hit. Unfortunately, this will, of course, make the Bebop instantly drop clear out of the sky with no chance of in-flight recovery. Once it starts falling, it's gonna fall. And once on the ground, you have to completely reboot the drone to clear the error and get off the ground again. There is no way to clear this error at all from the drone itself or the app or the controller. Thankfully, it's not too sensitive. It only ever cut out on me when I hit something quite solid. And thankfully, whenever I hit something quite solid, it was done deliberately to see if I could break the thing because, you know, I'm reviewing it. I've repeatedly clipped light materials like leaves and twigs and flowers accidentally, all without issue. But still, when you do happen to hit something solid, plummeting out of the air with no way to try and recover in flight, that's going to cause some issues, perhaps even more issues than it's meant to solve. I'd like to be able to choose if I want this feature enabled. I'd like to see that in a firmware update. Please, Barrett, let me turn it off. On that note, though, I have crashed a few times, some accidental and some very deliberately, as I said, and despite the lightweight feel of the construction of the beer bulb, it is very, very sturdy. I've not even managed to damage a prop yet, let alone break one, or even something more vital or difficult to replace. Oh, and yes, I should mention, as is common these days, you do get a full set of replacement propellers in the box, should you manage to damage the installed set. On the plus side of Parrot's dedication to consumer satisfaction is the aggressive rate at which they're pushing out firmware updates to fix small bugs and improve functionality. It really shows they give a damn and in fact are passionate about the post-purchase experience and making the product even better for everyone who's already bought one. Now then, aside from that weird battery changing issue, there is only one other physical issue that I have. The Sky Controller. Although it's awesome and an absolute pleasure to use, I love it. It is brilliant. It is mm, awkwardly shaped and quite large though. It's a pain in the ass to carry, is the long and the short of it. It won't slip into any normal bag or backpack that I own. I've been carrying it slung over my shoulder, just like my messenger bag, which works fine. I mean, it's not really heavy or anything, but it is still awkward to carry, even like that. If I could make one suggestion to Param, it'd be to redesign the Sky Controller, or perhaps offer a second, smaller model of Sky Controller. Flatter, simpler, easier to carry. I'd even be okay with sacrificing a bit of that extraordinary range for smaller antennas if it meant I could have a similarly wonderful physical control, but in a form factor that I could carry much easier. On that note, though, the drone itself is wonderfully easy to transport. There's no bottom-mounted camera or gimbal or anything. That means no awkward protruding landing gear to protect the camera and the gimbal. And that leaves the drone with a flat, low-profile shape that I can easily slip into my normal canvas messenger bag. No special case or backpack needed. It's awesome. And its remarkably robust build tolerates this, well, rough treatment brilliantly. I just throw it in the bag. I don't worry about it. Psh, away we go. I bet you can't do that with your DJI Phantom, can you?
All in all, I really like the Bebop. It is a brilliant bit of kit. I wish the Sky Controller was easier to lug around. I wish the batteries had a, well, better designed method of securing them than a Velcro strap and a bit of string. And I wish the camera had a wider dynamic range so I could avoid blowing out the highlights as often. But aside from those small issues, none of which are deal breakers for me, I love it. I admire its cleverness, I admire its robustness and beautifully stabilised video, while avoiding the bulky complexity and extra moving parts of a gimbal system. And the flight experience is superb, so easy to control, so easy to fly, so well behaved in the air, it's remarkable. Perhaps not as agile or as fast as drones made for stunts and racing and stuff, of course, but you don't want that in a camera platform. You want steady and finely controllable. I'm not convinced the video quality will satisfy those looking for professional level projects with teams of people and budgets and you know people who call themselves producers and such, but it's absolutely enough for the likes of me, the YouTubers of the world, the amateur and semi-pros, the aspirational drone photographers out there. It makes for a brilliant tool for that kind of stuff. Now, at the time I'm publishing this video, in Aussie dollars, the Parrot Bebop will ask you for just under $700 to own. But if you've the budget, I highly suggest splashing out on the $12.99 they want for the kit with the Sky Controller. Yes, it's a big price difference, but the experience with the Sky Controller is unquestionably superior in every aspect. So if you're even remotely serious about this thing, you want to use it for more than a toy, go for the Sky Controller experience. It is, it is better in every way. But that's that. I think I've covered most of the base. I mean, there's a whole bunch of little nitty gritty stuff I didn't cover. A few details of the of the Sky Controller and functionality of the app and stuff. But you can read that on the site if you want. I don't need to go into it here. I wanted to give you what it's like to use and own, operate, walk away with the with the footage and all that sort of stuff. And you've seen for yourself all the footage in this review. I really, really enjoy the Parrot Bob. It is a wicked bit of kit. But that's it. I am Blunty. Thank you for watching. Hope this has been helpful, informative, interesting, whatever. I will catch you next time.